All right. Well, thank you so much for coming to talk to our students about PLU. Um, I know they're excited to hear this. And for anyone who wasn't able to join, uh, we'll have this posted on our YouTube page. So they'll hopefully be able to get this information. Mm -hmm. Of course, thanks for having me. So I'll go ahead and get started here. Um, so we are, this is PLU, I'm from PLU. Um, we are located in Tacoma, Washington, um, a little bit outside of the, um, a little bit outside the city. So I'll zoom out a little bit here. Um, we have downtown Tacoma over here. Um, and as you can see, we're right on the sound, pretty close to water and all of that for um, during the summer months, all of that, it's pretty fun. But we are in that sweet spot to where it's a little bit outside the city. So you still have that access if you are looking for more of that city life. We are probably about 30 minutes um, from Olympia over here. If you're looking to do any like anything with pre-law um, policies, anything like that. We're about 45 minutes south of Seattle um, and about 40, 45 minutes um, from Mount Rainier as well. So we are the closest university to Mount Rainier as well. So it's great for hiking options, getting outside, but also some research options if you're looking to um, study more natural science as well. So we'll zoom back in here. Um, this is our whole campus. It is large. I don't remember the exact number of acreage, but it's, um, it's large, but very walkable. Um, so that's good. You won't get lost, I promise. <laughs> um, this is our fancy new um, sign that we have outside. It is great for picture ops and all of that. Um, and this is kind of our starting point for the tour for today. Um, then we're going to go over here to our library. Um, this you will come, become very familiar with in our library. Um, this is where our Center for Student Success happens. Is that, um, so if you, the Center for Student Success has um, tutoring hours. So if you need um, help with any subject, they have tutoring hours for all subjects that we have, that we offer. You can do um, individual tutoring if you'd like, just by yourself and create an appointment. You can also do like drop-in tutoring hours that they have. Um, you can set up like a group tutoring as well. So if you'd like to go in with a group of friends, if you're taking classes together and you'd like to do tutoring together, um, that's also an option. Um, we do have some, some fun new furniture in there as well. So just trying to make it as comfy as possible. So it's nice, um, great relaxing place for you to, to study as well. Um, within the library, there's also our help desk. So if you need any kind of tech support whatsoever, um, as a student, then this is your place for it. Um, so if you're, you need something happened to your laptop and it broke down, exploded or something, we actually have um, laptops that you can rent. Um, so if you have some type of emergency that happens, you can rent a laptop actually. Um, it'll help you with um, getting kind of your online student profile and all that stuff too. Um, so if you have any kind of tech issues going on, um, they are really awesome for that as well. Um, or your student email, anything like that. Uh, we did get some brand new equipment in here as well. So uh, brand new computers, um, nice, shiny and fancy, working great. This is kind of a, a, a bubble view of the inside of the library. I won't click the video on here, but um, as you can see, so there's three floors on here and it kind of uh, increases in, or decreases in volume as, as more you go up the stairs. So our first level um, in the library is like conversation, chit chat. This is where you can have, um, like if you have group projects, this is the place that you would meet as a group that you can have discussions and chat and all of that. Um, second floor, you can still chat, but on a quiet level. Um, so if it's just you and one other person working one-on-one, -on -one, or maybe you prefer kind of just like a quieter background, then that's a great spot. It is a little bit quiet and there's some comfy chairs up there too, some bean bags and all of that. Um, or if you are like me and you just need silence so you can really study, hone in and, and focus, um, then that third floor is just uh, great for that as well. So let's head on back here. So we are in the library right here. 
we are actually going to go to this administration building. This is where my office is located. Um, if you are able to come in an in-person tour by whenever we are able to have those again, this is where you would come to. Um, this is also home of humanities classes. So if you're interested in, um, let's say, history, religion, languages, all of that, um, this is where your classes mostly are going to be as well. Um, there's a lot of officer or um, professors offices in here as well. Um, all of our professors have office hours. Um, some some professors require that you stop in. So yes, they do want to, to know you and, and see their students and get to know them a little bit, um, but they're always available. So any type of questions or anything that you're wondering about, um, or if you just wanna like stop in and say, hey, they're always um, open to that and excited to get to know their students. Um, so just a little bit more of the inside. It is just a very big and bright building, which is nice. Um, and there is a loot cafe within here as well. So if you are, in between classes and need an extra snack, this is right in the building, so you don't have to go back to the cafeteria to grab anything. Um, you can just grab that in between classes, which is really nice. Um, you can also use your loot card um, at these cafes as well. So we'll see another one later on. Um, but with your loot card, you'll get your dining dollars that will come with your meal plan um, as a student or loot bucks. And you can just swipe that and use that on there. Um, and then if, if anyone has any questions throughout the time, feel free to stop me too. Um, and some students, uh, student financial services is within here as well in this building. So um, if you decide that PLU is the place for you, then you will uh, at some point stop over here and um, in terms of like scholarships and things like that, you might need their help. So that is where that is located as well. Um, like I said, this has got a ton of classrooms in this building. This is an average classroom. This is what most of our classrooms look like. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty, uh, pretty small class sizes. So we do have about 20 students to a class. That's about our average um, class size. You will see a, a bigger classroom later on. So our, our biggest classes are about 40 students. Um, and that's like a huge class for us. Um, so most of your classes are going to be about this size, about 20 students, if not a little bit smaller. Um, and then our furniture as well within these classrooms are also movable, which is kind of fun. So if you do have any type of group projects or anything like that, then you can easily rearrange the whole room. Um, again, here's another classroom. Um, these all have their own computer um, and projector and all of that. They all have their own technology within all of the classrooms, which is really awesome as well. So they're all... Um, suited up with technology. Um, let's go across the pond here to Xavier. And here we go. Xavier, this is actually where I took most of my classes. Uh, I'm a PLU alum and um, I graduated 2014. Um, so this is where I took most of my classes. I studied uh, sociology and Hispanic studies. Um, so this building is home to social sciences mostly. So sociology, psychology, anthropology, um, all of that. Um, studying the individuals. Um, so from the, the person and how people interact with, with other individuals up until sociology and how groups of people interact with other groups of people. So um, I am biased, this is my favorite building on campus, but this is the inside. Um, again, there's tons of professors uh, offices within here as well, so very accessible. This is that bigger classroom that I told you about. Um, this is one of our biggest classrooms on campus that you can, can see actually. So um, this is, there's probably about 40, 40, 50 students in there. And as you can see, it's only about halfway filled. Um, so we don't even fill up our biggest classrooms anyways, um, but we have the space for it. Um, this is what we like to call kind of our Harry Potter classroom as well, because it's got a little bit of a Harry Potter-esque feel to it. Um, but this is, this is home to our biggest classrooms and also our smallest one. Um, our smallest one, I want to say it has like, it's literally just a table and like four chairs. 
yes, we do use that one as well. I did have a class in that classroom. Um, so your classes might start out um, large, especially if you are, um, if you're interested in those health sciences where you are going to need to take some bio biology courses, um, those like biology 101 um, or psychology 101, those types of classes are going to be the bigger ones that are lots of students in them. Um, but as you get further up into your major, you'll get smaller and smaller classes. So my um, graduating class, my capstone class is what you would call it. Um, I actually had like five students in that class. So um, tons of opportunities just to get to know your professor and have more of like a mentoring experience um, rather than just sitting back in a classroom and have someone talk at you. Um, so it's much more, much more personalized and just an interactive experience. Um, again, this classroom gets utilized quite a bit here, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great, um, great space. So this is kind of a more panoramic view. Um, and now, I guess now because of COVID, um, we are actually still able to have some in-person classes just because we do have classrooms like this that are large enough that we can and class sizes that are small enough. Um, so some of our classes are actually do have some in-person components to it. Um, and we are looking for kind of spring semester to where students do have to meet at least like once a week um, just to keep that community feel and all of that as well, um, that they are still engaging within the, the PLU community. Um, let's hop over to how many do, do either of you um, are interested in like the arts or um, like music, theater, dance, anything like that? I know yeah. Serena's interested in um, political science. Okay. And I know that Eli's interested in culinary arts okay. uh, and Chrissy is an artist. Okay, awesome. So if you are one of those students that are interested in those things, these, um, these buildings here, this six, that is our Center for Performing Arts. So I'll hop into this, uh, those in a second. This over here is our um, Center for Music. And up here is Ingram Hall is our um, kind of our arts studio. So once you're kind of, uh, once it gets time to um, kind of choose your classes or choose your residence hall and where you live, if you are interested in the arts, a lot of students are going to choose this Hinderley um, Hall because you're right dab in the middle between all of those. So you're closest to that performing arts center, you're close to that music center, you're close to that arts um, as well. We also have learning living communities. Um, so if you are interested in a certain topic um, like create, creative expression, we have a wellness house if you're interested in like health and wellness. Um, so a lot of like nurses or pre-health pre science students will, will live there as well. Um, Hong Hall right here. This is our international hall. So if you are interested in um, studying a different language um, or being part of our international honors program, you can opt in to live in those wings as well. Um, we also have a uh, first generation wing. So if you are the first in your family to attend a college or attend a university, you can opt into that wing as well and live with other students who might have the same experience as you. Um, but there's, we have a ton of different options. Um, they are optional, um, so they're not required, but it's a fun option for your living experience just so that you are, um, you're living with other students that are interested in the same topic as you, right? So you already have a conversation starter. You already know that these students are interested in the same thing as you. Um, so you already kind of have your you know, built-in friends group, which is really fun. Um, so I'll hop into that um, Performing Arts Center here. We, PLU actually does put on, um, I wanna say uh, about a hundred shows per year uh, or a hundred performances per year. Um, so we, this is a building that gets used a lot. Um, and this is our, kind of the inside of the theater. We do also offer um, scholarships as well. So if you are interested in the arts, we offer artistic achievement scholarships um, and they range, they start at a thousand and will range up from there. Um, the cool part about them is that you don't have to major in the um, 
you don't have to major in the topic that you auditioned for in order to keep that scholarship. So you could um, audition for music and voice and theater and um, you know fine arts like painting and drawing um, and not have to major in them. You would have to participate somehow on campus. So that could be being part of a play um, or taking music lessons, that type of thing, um, but not necessarily having to major in that. Those scholarships are also stackable too. So like I said, you can audition for everything that is that is out there. So with an instrument, with voice, with uh, theater, all of those, and those can stack on top, which is really awesome. Um, so these are some pictures of um, some of our students and what they're doing. This is within the theater department. Um, if you are interested in theater, you will get um, obviously, you know, acting classes and all of that, but also kind of the stage design um, and set kind of the background that goes beyond all of that as well. Uh, kind of behind the scenes. Um, that is an option within the major. So you can um, do a route, an acting route. You can also do uh, directing and stage design type um, route as well. So it just depends on your interest, um, but it's pretty flexible with what your, depending on what your interests are. Um, again, these are just some pictures of uh, some of the performances that we've done, we've done quite a few, um, and these are always fun, even if you're not um, part of the arts, just to go and support your other friends that are, um, and just see the see the show. Um, I believe students get free admission, so it's always fun just to just to come check it out, because um, our students are really really talented. And then this is within that theater. Um, it does see quite a bit of, uh, of people. I don't remember the exact uh, number of seats within there, but it is quite large. The acoustics are really awesome if you are interested in theater. Um, so it's a great, great space for that. Um, so I'm gonna jump over here to that Ingram Hall. This is our Center for Arts area. Um, what's cool about this is, let's see in a second here, there is a um, gallery area within here. Um, and our, the professors are still, you know, working artists. And so they put on some of their, um, their own art within here, um, as well as community members. Um, so it's really a, a community space within, um, within the campus there um, to get to know um, artists throughout the area, as well as students to, to show off their own art as well. Um, like I said, we have scholarships for this as well. So if you're interested, I highly suggest that you apply. Okay, and I will hop into this music area as well, just so we can see this. Um, we're gonna see some pictures in here of our famous organ, uh, which is kind of my favorite part on campus. Um, it's. It was given to the university um, as a present when we started. So it is over a hundred years old. It is a very old organ. Um, and it's very impressive once you're, uh, once you're able to see it in person. Um, so this is that organ I was telling you about. Um, this is a picture of one of our Christmas concerts, uh, which we were pretty famous for as well. They're just phenomenal concerts. Our students are super talented. Um, this year they're doing it a little bit different. Um, so they're actually doing some mini performances throughout December, doing 12 days of Christmas. Um, so it's a little different how it's set up, um, but again, super talented students. Um, and you, you do have that option that you can, um, you know, major in voice or major with an instrument um, or orchestra or um, just depending on kind of what your, what your interests are, you do have that flexibility within here. Um, I always get asked uh, as well, you know, outcomes and job perspectives and things like that. Some of our students have gone to um, have stayed local and have worked with Tacoma Musical Playhouse. Some have gone to um, Seattle Symphony um, or Broadway. Um, I just noticed actually, so this girl here, her name's actually Michelle. Um, she actually graduated with me from PLU um, and she is now a voice actor for, um, for like anime uh, series. Um, so really the sky's the limit for kind of what you're looking to do at PLU. Um, I just say, just make sure that you're chatting with your professors and, and um, communicating with them because they really are your best resource and 
getting you to where you are, uh, where you want to go with your goals. Um, like I said, we've had students go out to Broadway as well. So it's really just depending on what you'd like to do. I am not sure which anime, I'm, I apologize, um, but I do know that she's, she has done that. Um, one, of the, one of the voices that she has done is, um, it's like a, a Hello, it's a Hello Kitty um, type anime. I don't remember her character, but she is part of that. Um, so yeah, tons of options within here. Like I said, even if you are not, I am one of those people that is not talented. I cannot play an instrument or sing, um, but it's always fun to go see these performances, so. Awesome. And while we're up here on upper campus, you can see some of the um, inside of the residence halls as well. Um, this is actually inside of Ordal Hall. Um, so you can see this is a pretty average uh, residence hall room, right? So you're going to get two beds. You kind of get the flexibility of how you want to put these together. Um, sometimes students will stack them on top. Sometimes you'll like, you know, you can arrange it however you want. Um, this year we were not able to have um, uh, roommates just because of COVID. So we do have about 850 students on campus this year um, and they do have their all um, own single room, um, but they did also get a pen pal, which is pretty fun. So they've been um, getting to know their community um, through pen paling um, as well as other community events um, throughout the year. But but that has just been our, our option for this year. So it's really just kind of up to you and how you want to decorate your space. Um, this is the maker space uh, within Henderley Hall, which is really cool. So if you are interested in um, just working with your hands, I guess, um, or being creative in any aspect, um, we have a maker space on campus. So there's supplies in there. You can see the, the paper in the background uh, on this picture, but there's also like sewing machines. Um, some students have done like robotics in there. Um, some students, um, brought their own material and they made like mascot costumes. Um, it's really kind of up to you, but this is that space to where you can just really explore your creativity and just play around with stuff, which is fun. Um, they do have supplies within there, um, but it just kind of depends um, on kind of what you're looking for. Um, so the girl that, you know, made uh, mascot costumes, she did have to bring her own mascot you know, material and fur, you know, whatever she made them out of, but she could definitely use all the um, sewing machines and all of that. So within the residence halls, we also put on community events. So this is a picture of that um, to where the whole university is, um, is invited. Um, so this is one of those shared spaces that, that those types of things can happen in to where you can, you can meet in, in larger groups and, and get to know other, other students throughout the, um, throughout the year. Um, this is, oh yes, this is Hong Hall. Um, this is actually the hall that I lived in when I was a student. Um, so when you first walk into the, to the halls, there, there will be a greeter there. Um, so if you're a new student and you are completely lost, don't worry, they will be able to help you. That's what they're there for. Um, so you can also have packages and everything sent um, to your room. Uh, here as well, which is kind of cool. So if you're ordering a package or something, this is where the person, this is where you would go pick it up. Um, mail, things like that. Um, this is just kind of the lobby, again, a shared space that you can um, hang out with. Um, most of our lobbies um, do have, you know, a ton of windows. So it is just a nice, bright place to be. Um, and this is between those. So this is kind of more on campus feel, I guess, um, between all those buildings. Um, so it is a nice cozy place um, between all these brick buildings. Um, so this is gonna be all of these, all of these buildings that you're seeing here is right in between all of those uh, residence halls. So someone's asking, how do you, um, how do you choose housing? Is it uh, a freshman or sophomore hall? Um, yeah, so housing, um, you will actually fill out um, a questionnaire. They'll ask you like a hundred questions. It's a ton of questions. And then it's an actual person that pairs you together with um, a, a roommate um, or a pen pal, depending on the situation. Um, but you essentially get to choose where you live. So you'll, 
um, answer all your questions for, you know, your roommate, your pen pal or whatever. Um, but then you also get to put in um, your top three of, I would like to either live here or here or here. Usually you're gonna be placed in your first or second choice. Um, that's where you would also opt into a learning community. Um, so you can mark in there whether you'd like to live in that learning community or not. Um, so you can participate in a learning community and not live there. Um, so that's another option too. So if you, let's say you'd like to be part of the, um, the IHAN wing in, the, in that uh, Hong Hall and the International Honors Program, but you don't want to live in that wing, that's fine. You can still participate with their um, wing events and um, different activities that, they, that they're doing without having to physically live there. Um, so that's another option as well. Um, some students prefer that, like if they are an athlete or something, they prefer to live on lower campus so that they're, they're living closer to where they would be to like the gym or fields or something like that. Um, but they can still have that option to participate in, in a learning community that might be located on upper campus. So you have that flexibility, which is pretty cool. Okay, so going through our residence halls here, I'm gonna stop here at our Wong Center. Um, this is our Center for Global Education. Um, we are big on global education here at PLU. Um, that's actually the reason uh, uh, why I chose PLU as a student was the study away programs um, that, that PLU offers. Those are going to be, um, you're going to work with the, the Wong Center here if you are interested in study away at all. Um, I'd highly recommend it. Um, this year it might not be um, as accessible, but as you're thinking more in terms of your college experience, it is definitely still an option for, for future years. Um, but we do have um, gateway programs to where, um, oh good, lots of students are interested in study abroad. I'm excited about that. That's my favorite part. So I'll talk about it lots because I can. That's, a, that's always my favorite thing to talk about. Um, our, so we do have gateway programs. So those are semester long programs that are designed by PLU. Um, so all of your credits transfer, all your financial aid goes with you. It's the same price as if you were on campus. So it's super seamless. It's the easiest thing to do. Um, I actually did one of those programs um, and went to Oaxaca, Mexico for a semester um, and actually earned more credit in Oaxaca than I would have on campus. Um, so sometimes it works out really awesome. Um, again, that's kind of the best way to go. There's a few different options, a few different programs, kind of depending on what your major is and, and where you'd like to go. Um, but that's the best option to go if you're, if you're able to. Um, some students you are going to have, um, you know, if you're a nursing student, you're going to have a pretty packed schedule to where a whole semester might be really hard to fit in. Um, but for those students, we do have J term um, courses that you can do as well. So PLU works on a 414 semester system. So a four month fall, a one month January or J term as we call it, and then a four month spring. Um, so that one month, that January or J term, you're only gonna take one class. Even if you're on campus, you only take one class. Um, so a lot of students will take that one class abroad um, during that January, which is really fun because you still get that, um, that international experience, that studying away experience without having to be gone for so long. Um, and it's, it's just an exciting, exciting um, thing to do. Um, and it's a great way to take, you know, what you're learning in the classroom and apply it to a completely different system. Um, so one of those programs that I actually did, uh, a J-term program, uh, was in England and Scotland with the sociology department. Um, and we studied the, cr the criminal justice system over there, uh, which was super awesome. So we learned all about, um, you know, our criminal justice system that we know here in the US um, and went there and it is very different their criminal justice system over there. Um, so just having those perspectives of, um, you know, how things are, are done, um, different parts of the world. Um, it's just a really awesome experience. Um, you know, we got to see like modern prisons and medieval prisons, which is pretty fun. So um, part of the, the, the learning experience is just getting to know that culture um, and history of, of a different place in a different country as well. So um, yes, and these are videos of that as well. So you can check those out later. Um, this is actually, if we were on a normal tour, we'd be walking down Henderley Hill here. So you're welcome. You can save the walk because it's, it's quite a doozy of a hill. Um, so 
so that's good just so, just so you know um so i'll hop into morgan over here this is our center um for learning and, and technology so if you're interested in um like business um computer science um you'll have maybe some like natural science classes all of that in there um that this is the the, the building that you'll have those classes in um so this is actually a um a green certified building um, to where it is completely sustainable um, by itself. So it has all these, you know, fancy, um, fancy technologies that it used to actually build this to, uh, with like heating and lighting and all of that. Um, so it isn't actually just a cool physical building um, within our, our science department. So um, engineering classes, things like that are going to be in here as well. So if you're interested in engineering, we do have a three two program um to where you would do three years here on campus at plu and then two years at one of our partnering schools um so it's a five-year program um but you would do uh you would graduate with two bachelor's degrees which is pretty cool um computer science we have that as well it is more a software based um so you'll be an expert in a ton of different software um different different softwares that we have um, math, things like that um, are going to be in here in this building as well. Um, again, a lot of professors offices are in there as well. Um, so please, please, please visit your professors if you um, have any questions. Um, or if you just like to get some more information about some PLU programs, professors love to chat with students. Um, just in general, just give them some extra information about our programs. So this is kind of what it looks like on the inside of that building. Um, so like I said, Lots of good space. Um, offices are in there as well. Um, good. Yeah, I'm glad that you you're like able to to navigate our website with the majors. So that's good. Uh, I'm glad. Yeah. Have any questions? Feel free to to reach out. So again, this is kind of the inside of the building. Um, and the outside, it's a pretty one. So. Moving on to Reiki. So if you are a chemistry major or biology major, um, or are we taking any of those classes? So if you are interested in pre-health sciences, um, then this is going to be the building where you're gonna spend most of your time. Um, so our biology is actually kind of the biggest major that we have on campus, so just because it does encompass that um, pre-health sciences as well. Um, if you are interested in that, we do also have an advising track. Um, so you'll just, as you register for classes your first year on campus, um, someone will help you do that. So don't worry, you wouldn't have to do that by yourself. Um, you'll sit down with the academic advisor and they'll kind of walk you through the process and, and help you do that. Um, but if you are interested in that, you'll be um, also be assigned an advising um, team essentially. So you'll get a team of about seven advisors that help you um, like pick your coursework, make sure that you're taking the courses that are best suited for you and kind of your time after PLU um, for different grad programs, things like that. Um, they'll help you with composite letters, letters of recommendation. They'll do mock interviews with you, um, really kind of everything that you would need to be set up for success for, for graduate school. Um, and we see great success with that. Um, about 80% of our students um, that apply to medical school are accepted. Um, same with dental school, I want to say it's about 79, so a little bit, um, but it's it's right around about 80%, which is huge. I want to say the national average is like 40, 45. Um, so we're a really excellent spot um, for anything pre-health sciences um, or anything like that. Um, these are some of the labs that you have um, within that building. Um, some fancy equipment. I was not a biology major, so I have no idea what the equipment is called. Uh, but we do have it. This is Enrique. I do know him. Um, he is actually um, a very large slug that we have down there. So it doesn't give it justice, this picture. But uh, Enrique is probably actually this the size of me. Um, so it's a, it's a large snail. Pretty fun down there. Um, so there's some cool display cases down there. Um, mm -mm. And I think this is more of a, yeah. Um, and this is actually a lab class. So this is a real life lab class that that would be um, that you would have. So as you can see, maybe about 20 students, probably a little bit less. Um, 
but where else are you going to see a lab class that small, right? Um, so, and tons of space, all this cool equipment. Um, the professor would normally be right here, but um, so lots of interaction with the professor, um, just kind of helping you throughout the way. Okay. Um, so right outside of Reiki is Foss Field. Um, it is essentially uh, a large field, so I don't have a, a ton of pictures about it. Um, but um, this big field is where all of our um, a lot of our sports are going to happen. Um, so if you're interested in um, playing a sport or maybe an intramural sport, um, you're going to have some practices over here too. So. If you're an athlete, we do offer 19 um, Division III uh, NCAA sports. Um, it's another great way just to kind of get to know students outside of your major, outside of your classes, and, and kind of get to know some other students and with, within the community. Um, if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're interested in playing a sport, um, but not necessarily competitively, we also offer all of our varsity sports as intramural sports as well. Um, on top of that, we also offer, um, what's it called? Like ultimate Frisbee, um, water polo, I wanna say lacrosse, a um, bunch of other ones as well. Um, so those are all gonna practice on this FOSS field here. It's just kind of a big field, great space. Um, we do do some campus events within here. So this is an involvement fair that you can kind of see all these different signs of um, clubs on campus and organizations that you can get involved with on campus. Um, so this is where we'll do like community events too. When we have snow, then it's really fun to sled down there um, or create giant uh, snowballs like this guy. Um, yeah, like I said, so it's a large field, but it doesn't look super fancy, but there's a lot of things that happen uh, right there. So this is that building, that Reiki science building that we were just in. Um, and this is going to be the, the gym. We'll go here next. Um, well, their fitness center, I guess. So this is our fitness center that we have on campus. Um, so if you want to do any like workout or anything like that, use machines, lift weights or anything like that, that's all going to be right here. Um, this is our campus pool. So we do have a pool on campus, which is cool. Um, this is our gym. Um, or if you're interested in like kinesiology, um, physical therapy, anything like that, this is where you're going to take your classes. Um, so it's all kind of right together there. Um, and you can't see it from here. So I'll show you a little bit, um, a little bit later then. So like I said, here is that fitness center. Um, so we do have quite a bit of equipment in there. Um, to be honest, I have not been in there lately. Uh, it has been uh, a little bit more restricted in, uh, in visiting, but there's a ton of stuff in there. So um, if you're looking to, to train or even if you just want to go in there and, and work out yourself, you don't have to be an athlete to use it. You can, you know, if you are a PLU student, then you have access to it. Um, and your access actually comes with, uh, with your tuition. So you do, do pay for a wellness health plan. Um, and that kind of helps pay for, for this as well. So like I said, tons of stuff in here. Um, yeah, this will kind of show you the, the inside. So there is a lower level and an upper level. Um, that upper level is gonna have more kind of like ellipticals and that type of thing. And then the lower level has a lot more like weights, um, that sort of thing. Um, but a lot of great equipment within there. Um, let's hop over to the Olson gym. So like I said, if you are interested in um, physical therapy, kinesiology, exercise science, anything like that, that's going to be your, your place where you're going to take those classes within there. Um, this is where also our um, personal trainers are in there as well. So if you are part of a sport, you have access to a personal trainer um, that will that will work with you. Um, our sports happen within here, some, some um, games as well. So like I said, even if you're not an athlete, it's still fun just to kind of participate in and um, support your fellow lutes um, because they are super fun, I promise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are kind of our, our kinesiology courses. This is more of the equipment that they would use um, and working with a personal trainer. 
Okay. Swimming pool. Does anyone swim in here? Is anyone a swimmer? Yes. Yay. Okay, cool. So you might actually use this. Great. <laughs> I am not I'm a horrible swim. swimmer. So Angie is uh, on the swim team at our high school and she manages the boys' swim team and she lifeguards. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Wait, um, so I actually, I would actually like to, um, manage, uh, boys or whoever, it doesn't matter, because I don't want to swim professionally, uh -huh. um, I do love, uh, how it all works, do you think, like, at that pool, I would be able to do that? Yeah, definitely. I have yeah, so you could do, you could still do, like, a swimming, like, an intramural swimming, so you would still be swimming, you just wouldn't be um, like swimming super competitively and, and trying to be like a national swimmer or something like that, right? So you would still be swimming and have meets. Um, yeah. Um, so that's, a, yeah, that's an option within there. You can totally do that. Do you um, hire students as lifeguards as well? What? Do you hire students as lifeguards? Could that be an on-campus job? Yeah. Yep, that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm glad you asked about that. Yes, we do have a ton of different campus jobs. Um, we actually hire more students than we do staff and faculty. Um, so tons of student jobs, that is one of them. Um, so yes, thank you for asking. Or even like coaches um, or referees. Um, so if you wanted to be like a referee for um, certain games or um, certain sport, so like soccer, if you want to be a ref for soccer, uh, that's a, a on-campus job as well. That's an option. Um, so these pictures are within our field. I think, oh, here we go. Great. So this is the inside of our pool here. Um, so you can kind of see that it is, um, you know, has its own lanes and all of that. And then more of kind of an open swimming as well. Um, it just kind of depends on the schedule um, of, you know, when swim times are and when you're able to, to go. Um, but yeah, you definitely can, you know, be a, be a coach or a manager of a, of a team or, or even swim yourself. Um, this is one of our, our fields, our baseball fields on the pitcher's mound right here. Um, so that gets used as well. And our, here we go, our football field. <gasps> um, so we actually don't have a huge stadium. So this is where, um, you know, our, um, our teams will practice, but to actually play, we actually play at Sparks Stadium that is in Puyallup. Um, so that's where, where our students play. It's really fun um, to go to those games just because it is, um, you know, you, you get to know a different part of the Puget Sound, but then also just everyone from POU and, and having that, uh, that school spirit is really fun. Okay, so let's hop over here to the Columbia Center. This is actually another part for just kind of student involvement. There's no classes within here, um, but um, on the top here, you'll see the picture. Um, they do have a dance space. So, um, I, well, I guess they do have a classroom then for dance classes. Um, so if you are, uh, if you did want to minor in dance, um, take dance classes, then you can do that here. Um, they do have that space for you. Um, this is also where they have um, like camping equipment um, and outdoor rec, if they have that here. Yeah, outdoor rec. Um, so that is our, um, it started as a club and now it's just kind of grown into this big program. Um, so if you are an outdoorsy person and you like hiking or going camping or um, skiing or anything like that, rock climbing, anything like that, getting outside and, and being in the, in the Northwest, um, this is a really great program for that. Um, that's essentially all that they do is they take students out to these uh, fun outdoor trips. Um, they have gear for you to rent too. So if you'd like to go like camping with your friends, um, without, you know, without a certain trip that they're putting on and just go yourself, you can, and you can rent out their equipment that they have. Um, and they have literally everything that you would need. Um, we went and did a tour and I, you know, there's some camping stuff that I didn't even know that you needed to take when you camp. So they have literally everything that you would need, um, but they do lots of fun trips throughout the year um, and they keep them pretty cheap too. So for camping, you know, they usually try to keep them under $20 um, and that includes like transportation and food and literally everything that you would need. So, 
Okay, moving on down. Fuliger. So this is one of the residence halls, um, as you can see. So this is one of the residence halls that um, you might want to live in if you are a kinesiology major um, or maybe a science major. Um, because this is going to be a lot closer to your classes um, because it's on lower campus here. Um, so Flieger is one of those um, residence halls that actually doesn't have a learning community. Um, so if you want to live somewhere that doesn't have a theme to it, then that's an option for you. Um, this is kind of outside for it. Um, it is on lower campus, so it is um, just a very different feel. Um, because you're closer to like the fields um, and the gym and that, tarp, that type of thing. Um, this is Tinglestad. This is actually the tallest, tallest building on campus, as well as within Parkland. Um, so this is a nine story building. Um, a lot of first year students do live in this hall. Um, it's also the, has our first generation wing. So if you're the first in your family to go to a university, that, uh, that wing is also in here. Um, a lot of athletes are going to live in this one as well because it's closer to um, the the gym and fields and all of that. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of first year students live in here as well. Um, you don't have to be a first year student to live in this and live in this building. Um, so you know, there's still lots of juniors and seniors that that live here as well. Um, yes, you can live on campus if you're you know junior and senior. We do have more apartment style housing as well. So this first picture. This is actually of South, um, and this is more of our apartment style housing uh, that we have as well. So if you are a junior or senior and you'd like to live on campus, but more of kind of um, apartment style, this is a little bit um, away from campus as well. It's kind of tucked back in the corner. Um, so you do have a little bit more of that separation and, and independence as well. Um, so here's that Tinglestad, that big, tall, nice building. Um, yeah, so like I said, this is South here. Um, south on the outside. And as you can see, it is a little bit farther away from campus. So that Tinglestad, that building, that real tall one, that's what that is right there. Um, so it is a little bit kind of outside of campus. So you do have that a little bit more independence um, where it feels that you're not, not quite living in campus uh, as much. So if you are interested in living in, in these kind of more apartment style housing, you do have to have junior standing um, or be of 20 years of age, I believe. And then moving on up. Can I ask a question about housing? Yes, please do. So I remember way back in the day, I'm not gonna tell you how long ago because that's not your business. But um, my friend was living in the dorms and there was pretty strict guidelines like uh, no people of opposite genders, um, curfews. Is that still in play? Yeah, so we do still have a curfew. Um... I don't remember what time it is. I want to say like 10, 10 o'clock, maybe 10 or 11. So you have um, to be in your dorm at night? Yes, yeah, to where it's, this is quiet hours. Um, so if you are, you know, being loud, then you might, you know, get a visit from, from someone saying, you know, hey, you need to keep it down. Um, that's also the time that, yes, you know, people from the opposite um, sex need to leave your room. Um, we don't have policies of um, to where you know if you if you're female and you can't have a male in your room. We don't have that policy um, unless it's you know after those hours. Um, we do. It kind of depends on where you live. So some wings are going to be if it's a themed wing. Sometimes it, it's going to be like a, a mixed gender wing. Um, so I lived in the IHAN wing. That's the the International Honors Program. So it's going to be you know. Uh, male and females living in that same wing. Um, there are other wings that are, you know, just female or just male. So it just depends on kind of where you're living. Um, and, you know, if you opt into a learning community, um, those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, someone else also asked if you're allowed to bring vehicles to school. Yes, you can. And you can bring one as a first year student as well. Um, so there are parking passes that you can pay for. I want to say they're like 60 bucks for a semester for a year. They're not super expensive. Um, but then you also get to choose kind of for what parking lot it is. So in this little map here, 
you can see, oh, that zoomed out a lot, but you can see, you know, the different parking lots that are around here. So if you live, let's say you live in Tinglestad right here, you can um, request a parking pass for that Tinglestad parking lot that's right across the hall. Super convenient, right? So you don't have to buy a parking pass for, you know, some parking place that's opposite side of campus. So you can um, get a parking pass for close to where you actually live and where you would um, where you would need it most. Um, great question. So we'll go back to the UC. This is going to be as you're walking back up to campus to upper campus. This is actually where all the food is as well. Um, so we only have we have um, we have one cafeteria on campus. Um, it's really kind of what combines the the lower campus and upper campus is people join to uh, for meals. Um, this picture here is actually of our loot locker. So if you um, need any loot gear, um, then this is your place to go. You can also buy your textbooks from here too. So if you um, need a textbook for a class or something and you have no idea where to find it, you can always go here um, and they'll have some options for you as well. Um, within the university center is also um, our diversity center. Um, so this is just a fun place to hang out. Um, they have some great snacks here as well, is what I'm told. Um, so if you're looking to just kind of hang out and chill and chat with other students and eat snacks, this is a great place for that. Um, they also put on some fun events um, for just different students throughout the campus um, for different like cultures, um, ethnicities, um, for just all types of people, um, tons of different events and different uh, programs that you can be involved with as well. Um, it's also home to our Scandinavian Center. So we were, um, we were founded by Lutheran Norwegians um, and this is kind of our um, ode to our heritage as well. And awesome. So this is, uh, this is kind of that lower part. So this is that loot locker that I was telling you about. So if you needed any loot gear, this is also where ASPLU is. So if you wanna be part of student government, anything like that, that's where this office is. That D Center, Diversity Center, all that, that fun, fun hangout spot is gonna be right here. Um, and if you can see here, it says the cave. That is actually, as you go down the, around the corner there, it's gonna bring you down some stairs and it does kind of feel like a cave, um, but it's a lot of really fun student events go in there. So um, like improv nights, they have um, sometimes just like small concert type things. Um, lots of fun, uh, just on campus, fun, fun events. Like, like if clubs are putting on events, those types of things, it's gonna happen there. Um, 21. There we go, okay. So now let's go upstairs in that same building. Oh yes, thank you for pointing out the time. Um, so for scholarships and applying. <laughs> That's probably an important thing. Um, so for applying, you will need, we are still accepting applications. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, you will need your transcript, right? We wanna see what classes you're taking, how you're doing, um, if you've taken any honors or AP, IB, anything like that. We'd also like to see a letter of recommendation. Um, so from a teacher, counselor, someone that knows you academically as a student. Um, we need at least one, but we'll accept up to three. So, um, but at least just that one is uh, from a teacher or someone that knows you as a student. We also require an essay. Now that's always the scary part for students um, to write about yourself, um, but that's really kind of the personal piece about this of who you are as a person, right? So I see your transcript, what classes you've taken and I have no idea who this person is. So this is that chance for you to tell me who you are Who's this person behind this application? Why do you want to attend here? What passions and what goals do you have? Um, the next part is um, the actual application. So we are on the Common app um, and it's a free application. So I always tell students, if you're applying anywhere that's on the Common app, might as well stick PLU on because it's free, might as well. Um, and then the last component is test scores. We are actually a test optional school. Um, so um, so you can actually apply without any test scores, which is totally fine. Um, if you apply for access scholarships, 
yes, no, then you don't need to apply again. So good, great question, Sally. If you apply through Act 6, that is your application to PLU. So no worries there. Um, yeah, good. Um, yes, that's what was, what's required for our application. Your application to PLU is also your application to scholarships. Um, so it's the same application. Um, this year we're awarding, we kind of boost our scholarships up a little bit, which is nice. Um, so it's up to 27,000 that you can qualify for. So pretty awesome. So those are just your merit scholarships. That's based on your application. Um, like I said, if you are involved in the arts, you can also apply for those arts scholarships and those will stack on top. Um, if you were confirmed in a Lutheran church, we have a scholarship for that, that will stack on top. If you, um, if your parents are alums, that will stack on top. So we have some other scholarships that will just kind of stack on top of whatever merit scholarship you have as well. Um, while we're talking about that and financial aid, I also want to point out a FAFSA is a great idea to fill out a FAFSA. Um, you do need that if you're looking, if you're thinking about maybe you might want to do a work study type thing, you have to fill out a FAFSA to qualify for that. Um, and some schools won't even um, consider for you if you haven't, you know, checked that box on your FAFSA. Um, so please do that. Um, if you have any questions on how to do that, I would love to help you. Um, but that's also a requirement. Um, also a great, great option, I guess. Um, and that will also combine with whatever scholarships you get from PLU. So it also just kind of stacks on top, which is another great option. So mm -hmm. any questions with that? I know that's always kind of a complicated process. Do you guys have any questions at all? Yeah, sure? I know I've, I've thrown a ton of information at you. So do you have any questions? If you have a question about a specific major or about study abroad or scholarships or anything. Oh, I do want to point out for, for nursing, we do actually have a separate application for nursing. So you will have to apply to PLU and submit the nursing application. So that's the only one where it's two separate applications. So if you don't get entered into the nursing school of nursing as a freshman, can you apply as a sophomore? You can, yes, yeah. So you can still come to PLU. You would, because um, we actually have a two-year program. So you would come to PLU, do your gen eds and whatever prerequisite courses, um, and apply as a current student. And that's uh, that's another option as well. So if you apply this year and, and you don't get in, that's totally fine. You can still come to PLU and apply again. Um, yeah. That's, I know nursing that's, can be kind of competitive. Yes, yeah, it, it is it is competitive major, um, but yes, you can um, you can apply again. So that's what I was you know I was advised to students as well. Like that's totally fine. Once you have come to come to PLU and you can show yes, I am you know a strong student and apply again, then that might actually look a little bit better that you have that um, that college coursework to show that yes, I'm a strong student. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes students are worried that, you know, I maybe had a, had a rough semester or something in high school to where their GPA dropped or something like that, and then they don't get in. Um, that's okay. So you can still come, um, do your gen ed courses, do your prerequisite courses for that program and apply again and show that even though, you know, whatever happened in high school, you still have that base of um, that first year coursework to show that, yes, you're a strong student. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for putting that link there. Um, you mentioned that the professors don't mind being contacted about um, their majors and stuff. How do you like, could you give like an example of like how I could start that or like yeah. anyone could? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to, I'll just share my screen. So I'll stop here. Angie, what are you interested in studying? A lot of stuff. That's what I thought. <laughs> That's yeah. great though, because we're, so we're a liberal arts school and we kind of encourage students to, you know, explore all of their passions. So that's awesome. Um, so you will have that flexibility. Oh, um, sorry, can you, um, I don't have sharing capabilities anymore. <laughs> I think it'll work now. 
There we go. Yes, thank you. Okay. So can you all see PLU's website here? Yes, okay, mm -hmm. great. So you can just go right here um, and type in, or let's just go here, programs. It's gonna list all of whatever programs that we have. Computer's a little slow today. So let's say you're interested in, um, let's say economics. So click on economics. It's gonna pop up with a little blurb and then you can click the learn more. That's gonna take you to that page of that, um, that major. And then you can go down on, on this side menu. Um, all of them are gonna have like a, a faculty, staff and faculty tab. So click on that. And then these are all people that you can reach out to. Um, Are we supposed to be seeing something? Because all yes, can you guys see faces oh, here? Yeah, now I can. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you click on that faculty tab, um, then that's going to show up with all of the the faculty that you can reach out to. So you can pick any one of them. I always suggest reaching out to whichever one says chair because they're going to be kind of the expert in that field. Um, so they're the best ones to reach out to and um, it's gonna have their email and phone number. To be honest, their email is probably gonna be the quickest way to get to them just because not everyone is on campus right now. Um, but if I was emailing this person, I can say, you know, hi, Professor Karen Travis, I'm interested in economics. Um, can you help tell me a little bit more about your program or something? Um, but yeah, they love chatting with students, so feel free to reach out. Um, but pretty much every major is gonna have this type of page. Um, and if you have trouble finding it, please reach out to me, totally fine. Um, actually, while we're on here, I'm gonna show you, since you're from Shelton, I'm gonna show you your admissions counselor. Um, sorry, I know we're running out of time here. Um, stop me if you all need to go, that's totally fine. Um, mm -mm -mm. Shelton, yours is going to be, oops, oh no. Yours is going to be Jinky. So this is your admissions counselor. If you see her face anywhere, then please feel free to reach out. Um, this is her a video, her intro video, is if you'd like to check that out. Um, and then her email and phone number. Any of these phone numbers you can text as well. So feel free to do that. Um, but yeah, she's really fun. Um, and she'd love to chat with you as well. So if you have any questions, she is your, your person that works with students from Shelton. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, any other questions, anything else that I can help answer for you all? Thank you, Shannon, so much for doing this. We yeah, really of course. appreciate it. Um, it, was, it was very helpful. Um, so thank you. Good. I'm glad. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? I, I know they will happen. Please reach out. Yeah. Wonderful. And I'll just let the upper bound students know that our next virtual um, event will be Wednesday, next Wednesday, 1 p.m. We have representatives from the uh, Washington State Opportunity Scholarship which is one of the larger scholarships in Washington State. And it's specifically for students who are interested in STEM or healthcare. Um, so a really great opportunity. You don't have to be locked into your major, but if you're interested in e any of those areas, um, definitely come and hear what they have to say. Uh, and then get your applications in because, you know, gotta get this done. Uh -huh. <laughs> and if you need help with applications or your FAFSA, please reach out to Priscilla or myself. We are eager to help you. And I am, I'm always available. So, um, and then also reach out to the colleges that you're applying to as well. Um, I know that that can make a difference sometimes. So thank you so much, Shannon. We really appreciate you. Any, any last minute, anything you guys want to say? Reach out how? Yeah, you can, uh, you can email me. Um, so I will put 
my email here. Um, and I'll put my phone number as well. Um, so you can either email me, um, you can call that number, you can text. Um, right now, most people on campus, email is going to be the quickest way to, to get a hold of us. Um, or you can go to that um, Jinkies page again. So on the PLU website, type in, you know, find my counselor um, on the on the visit page and it'll it'll pull up her face. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just realized I put this to um, privately. So I will put the in the chat to everyone. There we go. So everyone should be able to have my email and, and um, number there. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. Any other last minute questions? No? Okay. Well, thanks for having me. It was fun Thank chatting you. with you. Um, yeah, any other questions, feel free to reach out. So, awesome. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Elizabeth? Oh. Yes, Angie. Um, so I did fill out the FAFSA and all, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> Hi, Chrissy. We still need to talk, Chrissy. <laughs> um, but I didn't... Well, the thing is, is, like, I finished it and all, but I wasn't able to... Like, I had to make, like, an account, a financial account, whatever, for my mom, and so I did that, but, like... Yeah, your um, mom... Your, really if so a person is not a permanent resident or citizen or doesn't have maybe a social security number, um, things like that, those people are not able to make an account. Mm -hmm. And so they'll have to print out this sheet, the FASA signature sheet, and sign it, physically sign it, and mail it in. Well, my mom does have a social security. She, she does? Okay. Yeah. Okay. My dad didn't. Your dad so, did, okay. Did I have to put in information about my dad because he doesn't have any, no. okay, because no. I, didn't, I didn't know how one to do parent. that. You just had to do one parent. So oh. when you made the FAFSA ID for your mom, did it work? Like it went through and, it, but every time like I go onto her like uh, email or like, say, like, you know, confirm, like get the confirmation or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what it is. Um, it works, but then when I try to log into her account, it doesn't let me log in. It says, no, the account is locked because I did so many times like the right uh, password, but it says it wasn't right. And so like on other things I can log in, but then I can't do anything because now it's locked. So did you get an email about it being locked and what you should do? Yeah, it says log in or change the password um, because I know the email that's connected. I know the questions. I know the phone number, everything like that connected. But every time I try to change the email, uh, the change the password, um, it says it says an incorrect password or like incorrect, like you can't find this account. But it like shows in the emails I have an account. Hmm. I was going to tell you like, yeah, uh, while so ago, I didn't, I we can it. try it together. We can get on Zoom and try it together. It'd be great to maybe try it during the daytime because another option I've had to do before is call the FASA. I've called SAT. Priscilla, have you ever called the FASA people? No, I haven't, but you can't um, just print out the paper and email it back to them? Print the paper? That's an option, yeah. There, you, if you can't saw it, like, just, I'll take that. I guess, it, yeah. yeah, I can do that. It's nicer to do it online if we can. Yeah. So, do you want to zoom now and try and do it? Yeah, I'm free right now. Okay. Eli, are you still here? It's just four people are here. Yes. Okay. So, did you have anything you wanted to talk about specifically? Or are you just hanging out? I'm just hanging out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to help Angie with her, um, with her FASA, but if you need anything, let me know. Okay. 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 All right. So do you want to work on your FASA now, Angie?
Oh, wait, actually, <laughs> let's stop because this is getting recorded right now. So let me, um, I'll send you, you're, are you on Instagram right now or Reminder, what are you on? Okay, I'll send you a link via Instagram, okay? Remind works better because then I can. Um... Remind, okay, I will send you a link on Remind right now. Um, so I'll sign off and then I'll send you the link, okay? Okay. All right, bye guys, bye Eli. If you need anything, just let me know, okay? okay. Great day. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.